Tumukaribishe Rais wa Kenya President William Ruto Wafanyikazi wa Kenya hoye Bwana Yesu asifiwe Tafadhali tuketi chini asanteni sana Kwanza mimi nataka nichukue nafasi hii kwa heshima kubwa katika siku hii ya Labor Day tarehe moja mwezi wa tano 2023 kuwashukuru wafanyikazi wote wa Kenya na vile vile kuwapongeza wafanyikazi wote wa taifa letu la Kenya nikisema happy labor day nichukue nafasi hii kuwashukuru ninyi na wakenya wote kwamba mwaka uliopita tarehe tisa mwezi wa nane sote tulienda kwa uchaguzi tukachaguana kwa njia ya amani tukamaliza ukabila na tukaweka taifa letu katika ramani mpya ya kwamba wa Kenya wanaweza kutimiza haki yao ya kikatiba ya uchaguzi kwa njia ya ungwana na kwa njia ya amani mimi nataka niwashukuru wafanyikazi wa Kenya wote kwa sababu ya kushiriki katika uchaguzi huo kwa njia iliyofaa pongezi na asanteni sana nataka vile vile kwa njia ya kipekee na kwa heshima kubwa ni washukuru wa Kenya wengi wao wafanyikazi walionipatia nafasi kwa kura zenu na kwa maombi yenu niwe kiongozi wa taifa letu la Kenya watano nataka niwaambie asanteni sana nataka niwapongeze wa Kenya wote najua secretary general wetu wa kotu amesema hapa ya kwamba wengi wa wale ni viongozi wa wafanyikazi na watu wengine wengi walipiga kura kwa upande wa azimio mimi nataka niwaambie viongozi hawa na wakenya wote sote tulioenda kwenye uchaguzi ya kwamba kila mkenya ambaye aliamka asubuhi na mapema na akaenda akapiga kura kutekeleza wajibu wake wa kikatiba wa kuchagua viongozi mbali na kuchagua wa mrengo hii ama mrengo mwingine mimi nawaambia wakenya wote walioenda kwa uchaguzi pongezi zangu nyingi sana Every citizen of the Republic of Kenya that woke up early to exercise their right to choose leaders for our country deserves celebration and congratulations irrespective of which way you voted you exercised your right hakuna mkenya alifanya makosa kupiga kura upande wa wote ni haki yetu ya, kikabi, ya kikatiba kuhakikisha kwamba tunachagua viongozi wetu wale wa Kenya ambao hawakuenda kupiga kura hawa ndio wanahitaji tuwazungumzie kwa sababu wale ndio wenye makosa about 35 almost 
of the citizens of Kenya who are eligible to vote hawakuenda kupiga kura wale ndio pengine wako na makosa lakini kila mkenya ambaye aliamka akapiga kura akapigia Kenya kwanza ama akapigia asimio huyo ni mkenya mzalendo mwenye amesimama na kwenda kupiga kura ili tuwe na demokrasia na tuchague viongozi wetu kupitia kwa njia ya demokrasia ya demokrasia we are a democratic nation and no citizen should be judged for voting whichever way they voted nataka niwaambie viongozi walio hapa wa movement yetu ya labor the labor movement leaders nataka viongozi hawa wote nimekuja hapa katika sherehe hii ya kwanza ya labor day ili nikubaliane na nyinyi tushirikiane tufanye kazi pamoja kuwahudumia wafanyikazi wa taifa letu la Kenya na nimekuja mapema kwa sababu nimeambiwa mapema ndio best najua wengi wenu mlinilima sana mimi nataka niwaambie waswahili wanasema yaliyopita si ndwele jameni tushirikiane tufanye kazi pamoja mimi niko tayari kushirikiana na nyinyi pamoja tujumuike kushughulika na mahitaji na matakwa na yale mambo ambayo yatafaa wafanyikazi wa taifa letu la Kenya I want to ask respectfully all the labor leaders in our republic wasimame tafadhali waheshimiwa wasimameni tuwapigie makofi hawa wadosi mimi nimewaambia hawa wadosi wote mimi niko tayari kufanya kazi na wao karibuni my friends let's work together sawa sawa Musikuwe tena na baridi kwamba huyu mtu tulimlima pengine hako na maneno na mimi mimi sina maneno na mtu nyinyi mulitekeleza wajibu wenu wa kikatiba kupiga mahali kura mulipiga ile imebaki sasa ni kwamba hawa wafanyikazi walio wachagua pia hawa wafanyikazi wamenichagua so we share the employer nyinyi mmechaguliwa na hawa na mimi pia nimechaguliwa na hawa sisi wote ni wafanyikazi ya wananchi wa taifa la Kenya tushirikiane nataka niwaambie wafanyikazi wa taifa letu la Kenya ya kwamba pengine hatuna gold ama dhahabu pengine hatuna almasi ama pengine hata hatuna mafuta ile kidogo yetu iko turkana bado lakini tuko na the most important resource in the republic of kenya that defines our country and that is the kenyan labor force <laughs> wafanyikazi wa taifa letu la kenya ndio rasilimali ya taifa letu la Kenya ya muhimu kuliko rasilimali ingine yeyote The Kenyan workforce is what will shape the destiny of our country Na kwa sababu hiyo kwa sababu the Kenyan labor force is that important to the development of our country we must look after it we must work for it and we must make it possible for it to grow expand and flourish ni jukumu letu kuhakikisha ya kwamba wa Kenya wanapata nafasi ya kutosha kupata ajira ndio wachangie katika kupeleka taifa letu la Kenya katika kiwango kipya 
nasema hivyo kwa sababu hata katika mazungumzo tulioenda kwa wakenya wakati tulikuwa katika msururu wa mambo ya uchaguzi kati ya mambo mengi tulioambiwa na wakenya yanahusikana na wafanyikazi wa taifa letu na ndio sababu hiyo manifesto yetu the bottom up economic transformation agenda manifesto is front back sides and center about the Kenyan people and the Kenyan workforce na ndio mimi nataka niseme hivi katika mpango wetu we need to expand to grow and to develop the Kenyan workforce because that is the jewel of the resources we have in the Republic of Kenya na ndio sababu hiyo nataka kusema mambo masita ya muhimu ambayo tunapanga kama serikali kuhakikisha ya kwamba tuko na wafanyikazi na wanafanya kazi katika mazingira na katika hali ambayo wako na usaidizi wa kuchangia katika kupeleka taifa letu la Kenya mbele jambo la kwanza tumesema tunaweka mpango maalum katika sekta ya kilimo kwa sababu pale katika sekta ya kilimo ndio inazalisha nafasi nyingi za ajira katika taifa letu la Kenya ndio sababu tumeweka pesa bilioni tatu kukamilisha masoko katika kila constituency katika taifa letu la Kenya ili kila mkulima tumsaidie aweze kufikisha mazao yake sokoni mahali atakutana na wanunuzi na tuondoe changamoto ya mabrokers na makatels ambao wanaharibu jasho ya mkulima kwa kununua bidhaa zake katika bei duni na kusababisha mkulima jasho yake ipotee the reason why we are going to expand markets in all our constituencies we have agreed with county governments on agricultural aggregation and industrial parks in every county where we are going to spend as national government 5 billion shillings in the coming budget and the county governments will spend equally 5 billion shillings so that we can aggregate our agricultural produce and give real value to our farmers by eliminating middlemen cartels and brokers so that the Kenyan worker in the farm can earn a decent wage and a decent living vile vile tuko na export promotion program tuko na EPZ ya the river tuko na EPZ katika sehemu mbalimbali tunaweka EPZ dongokundu tuko na EPZ mpya naivasha tunaanzisha special economic zones zingine tano katika taifa letu la Kenya katika nia na mpango yetu ya kuzalisha ajira elfu mia mbili kila mwaka kupitia our special economic zones and our export economic zones kwa sababu tunataka kuhakikisha kwamba wale wakulim, wale wafanyikazi wa wanafanya kazi katika our export uh, zones and our special economic zones wanaongezeka na pia tuongeze sehemu yetu ya export ya bidhaa zinatotoka mashambani katika taifa letu la Kenya hiyo ni jambo la pili jambo la tatu tumekubaliana ya kwamba wafanyikazi wafanyibiashara wale wa small medium 
and micro enterprises tuwe na mpango maalum na ndio nimetengeneza wizara maalum ya cooperatives and MSMEs ili kushughulikia wafanyabiashara wetu wadogo kuanzia mama mboga kwa boda boda mtu ya kinyosi mtu ya kiosk wale wote tuwaweke katika mahali ambapo wanaweza kupata pesa ya kuendesha biashara zao hata kama hawana title deed hata kama hawana logbook tuwe na a new collateral mechanism that enables micro small and medium entrepreneurs to access credit even if they do not have other securities their track record their borrowing record will be the new title deed will be the new collateral that will make it possible for our small traders for our micro small and medium entrepreneurs to access credit tulianzisha miezi sita iliyopita hustler fund ambayo leo imekopesha pesa bilioni 27 wananchi wameshalipa bilioni 17 na wananchi ambao wamekopa hiyo pesa ni karibu wananchi milioni 15 na nataka niwatangazie ya kwamba kuanzia mwezi ujao tutapeleka hasla fund katika awamu ya pili mahali sasa wewe mfanyibiashara wa kiosk wewe mfanyibiashara wa kinyosi na wewe jamaa wa boda boda unaweza kukopa shilingi elfu kumi hadi shilingi elfu mia mbili kuanzia mwezi ujao hiyo ni katika nafasi yetu ya kuhakikisha ya kwamba wafanyabiashara wetu wadogo wadogo pia wanaweza kuchangia katika kuajiri watu wawili watu watano watu kumi because we believe kazi ni kazi si tulikubaliana namna hiyo jameni jambo la ine tumekubaliana ya kwamba sekta yetu the digital economy tulikubaliana ya kwamba tutaweka ile tunaita digital super highway juzi nilikuwa e, malava siku hiyo ingine nilikuwa kisi tulikuwa kwale katika mpango ambayo tuko nayo sasa tunafanya na tivets tumeleta kompyuta 1020 katika zile tivets sasa tunataka wabunge wetu tutashirikiana na wao tuwe na digital hubs in every ward in the Republic of Kenya so that we can tap into the digital economy and we can move our young people in their millions into digital jobs kwa sababu kuna ajira ajabu katika sekta ya teknolojia na kwa sababu wa Kenya ni wafanyikazi na umaarufu ya wafanyikazi wa taifa letu la Kenya inajulikana kimataifa hiyo sekta ambayo vijana wengi wa taifa letu la Kenya ni wanaelewa zaidi the digital space the reason why we are expanding our digital fruit footprint across the country is because we want to tap and connect our young people with digital jobs that will be possible under the whole program that connects young people to jobs anywhere in the world tuhakikishe kwamba vijana wetu tunawapanga na ajira na mimi nimefurahi ya kwamba tumeanza hiyo mpango na tayari kila tivet katika Republic ya Kenya itakuwa na makompyuta na tukikamilisha budget hii kila mbunge katika taifa letu la Kenya tutakubaliana na wao 
na tutako invest ili katika kila ward katika taifa letu la Kenya tuwe na digital hub mahali vijana wa Kenya wanaweza kwenda kupanga mambo yao ya ajira tukienda mbele tumekubaliana vile 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 waziri hapa amesema ya kwamba tuko na nchi nyingi ambazo wanatuuliza wanataka wafanyikazi wa Kenya nilikuwa ujerumani na kiongozi wa ujerumani atakuwa hapa on thursday chancellor wa Mar uh, ujerumani atakuwa hapa thursday na katika hiyo mkutano tumekubaliana tuta sign bilateral labor agreement ili wananchi wa Kenya wapate nafasi kwa sababu wametueleza wanahitaji wafanyikazi milioni hamsini kila mwaka Ujerumani na wanataka wa Kenya wachangie kwa wale wanataka kupata kazi hizo Ujerumani tuko na nafasi za ajira Canada tuko na nafasi ya ajira kule Marekani tuko na nafasi za ajira UAE Saudi tuko na nafasi za ajira katika sehemu tofauti tuna sign bilateral agreements kumi vile waziri amesema in the next couple of months ili nafasi ya ajira ipatikane kwa vijana wa taifa letu la Kenya kwa sababu kwa sasa mnajua ile pesa tunapata Kenya kutokana na wafanyikazi wanaofanya kazi nje ya Kenya tunapata bilioni ine kila mwaka wale wafanyikazi wanafanya kazi nje ya Kenya hata wamepita pesa tunapata kwa chai wamepita mapato yao imepita pesa tunapata kwa kahawa ama hata horticulture kwa sababu ni nafasi nzuri na nchi nyingi duniani imejenga uchumi zao kwa kupanga vile wafanyikazi wao ama wananchi wao wanaweza kupanga ama kupata ajira katika nchi zingine so tutakuwa na mpango ya kuzalisha ajira hapa nyumbani na vile vile tutakuwa na mpango ya kuzalisha ajira ama nafasi za ajira katika nchi zingine jambo la tano si tuko na mpango jambo la tano katika mpango yetu ya housing tumesema ya kwamba tuko na upungufu wa manyumba wananchi milioni sita na nusu Kenya wanaishi katika vitongoji duni katika miji yetu hapa Kibera kule Madhare Kawangware sehemu hizi zote na nafasi hiyo tunaweza kuibadilisha ile changamoto ya kukosa nyumba tunaweza kuibadilisha iwe ni nafasi ya kupanga ajira ya vijana wetu tumekubaliana kama serikali ya kwamba tutakuwa tunajenga nyumba elfu mbili Kenya mzima kila mwaka na hizo nyumba elfu mbili tunahitaji vijana zaidi ya milioni moja kutusaidia kama plumbers, electricians, watu ambao ni carpenters, wale masons, wafanyikazi wa mkono, wale wote tunahitaji vijana zaidi ya milioni moja kutusaidia katika hiyo mpango. Mimi najua ya kwamba kazi hiyo nimeanzisha nyumba kadhaa hapa Nairobi hapa Nairobi saa hizi tumefikisha nyumba 1040 ambazo tunajenga nitakuwa hapa makongeni tena in the next one month kuanzisha nyumba 1030 singine na tunataka kuhakikisha ya kwamba hiyo mpango katika budget yetu tumeweka nyumba mia moja katika kila constituency as the catalyst ya kuhakikisha kwamba tunaanza ku spread mambo ya ujenzi wa manyumba ili tuhakikisha kwamba vijana wetu wanapata ajira watu wengi na naona viongozi wengine wanashinda wakishangaa mbona huyu 
hasla anasukuma sana mambo ya ujenzi wa manyumba sikizeni the reason why we are pushing the housing plan ni kwa sababu nchi zingine wamegundua ya kwamba ajira huwezi tu kusema ajira itapatikana you must have a plan huwezi tu kusema oh uchumi itakuwa alafu ajira itapatikana hapana lazima uwe na mpango you must be deliberate about where and how many jobs you are going to create in which sector and for what reason wale ambao wananiuliza maswali kwamba hii nyumba unaongea juu yake wewe huko na haja gani na ile nyumba mimi naishi siwaacha tu mimi nijipange na nyumba yangu mimi nataka niwaambie hawa wadosi tafadhali unajua mpango ya housing sio nyumba peke yake tunatafuta hapana tunatafuta pia ajira ya hawa vijana kwa sababu na hiyo ndio muhimu hata kuliko ile nyumba tunajenga kwa sababu tusipopanga ajira ya hawa vijana watakuwa wanatungojea barabarani watakuwa wanaangaika mitaani wataingia kwa madawa ya kulevya na sote tutapata hasara it is important and i want the good people of the labor movement who are here to listen to me very carefully I know muko na maneno kidogo na mimi hapo lakini I am going to explain myself mpaka tukubaliane vile tutaenda mbele pamoja mimi nataka tukubaliane hivi that said I said five things I said six things nimekamilisha nimesema mpango yetu ya housing mpango yetu ya kilimo mpango yetu ya MSME mpango yetu ya housing mpango yetu ya digital na mpango yetu ya diaspora ndio tunataka tutumie kuzalisha ajira nafasi ya ajira kwa sababu nafasi ya ajira ni muhimu kwa vijana wa taifa letu la Kenya otherwise we are not going to solve the unemployment problem unless we have a plan on how we are going to solve it ya tatu jambo la tatu ili hii mpango yote hii iendelee lazima vile vile tuhakikishe ya kwamba wafanyikazi wa taifa letu la Kenya pia wanashughulikiwa how are we going to make sure that the Kenyan worker is ultimately going to reap a benefit from their work and from their sweat jambo la kwanza how do we protect the Kenyan worker how do we serve the Kenyan worker how do we work for the Kenyan worker for those of us who are in leadership and for those of us who have an opportunity to serve number one, we must make sure that when the Kenyan worker after working for 10 20 30 40 50 years they can retire in dignity today bwana atoli na hawa viongozi nataka niwaongeleshe as one of you as a leader like you hawa wafanyikazi ni jambo la kusikitisha sana kwamba baada ya miaka hamsini, miaka arobaini mkenya amechangia jasho yake amefanya bidii anaenda katika maisha ya umaskini Kenya the global age watch index you people in the labor movement should know it the global age watch index inasema Kenya kwa zile nyumba nyu, nchi ambazo zimefanyiwa utafiti Kenya ni inchi namba sabini na mbili kwa inchi tisini na sita karibu sisi tuko mkia kwa wale watu wanaenda nyumbani ama wana retire kwa umaskini why should the Kenyan worker retire into poverty lazima tujiulize lazima nyinyi kama viongozi wa labor movement you must ask yourselves how can you be leaders 
in the labor movement when the people you lead end up in retirement, in poverty. And it is the reason why Mimi nimekuwa na shida sana na mzee Atoli for a very long time. Nilikuwa nauliza Atoli, wewe unapinga hii 6%. Wewe unasema mwananchi atoe shilingi 200 kila mwezi. Ati hiyo ni pesa ya retirement, 200 shillings. Mwananchi akitoa 200, mfanyikazi akitoa 200, employer anatoa 200, 200. Sasa mimi nataka nikuulize. 200 inakuwa 400 hata kwa maombi hata kwa dawa hata kwa uganga utafanya nini mia mbili iweze kutosha kulinda huyu mtu akienda retire inawezekana kweli shilingi mia mbili ikabadilisha maisha ya mtu it's not possible and that is why we have age old poverty in Kenya and we are 72 out of 79 who has contributed sasa mimi nataka niwaulize viongozi wenzangu mko hapa. Sasa nyinyi mnasema ni sawa mtu wa contribute 200. Na hii sio pesa, sio tax. It is not tax. Hii ni pesa ya mwenyewe. Pesa yako ambayo utatumia ukienda retire hiyo ni tax. Sio ni pesa yako. Unaweka tu kwa akiba na waswahili wanasema akiba yoze bwana. Ama namna gani? So the reason why I I, I was pushing that we change this contribution structure ya mambo ya NSSF kutoka shilingi 200 mpaka 6% ni kwa sababu tunataka wafanyikazi wetu baada ya kufanya kazi miaka 20 30 waende nyumbani wakiwa na pesa ambayo watalipwa kila mwezi mpaka kila mtu aweze kwenda hiyo safari ya kwenda ya safari ya mbali akiwa anaishi maisha yenye heshima Tunaelewana jameni Mimi nimefurahi ya kwamba wakati nimeongea na mzee huyu atuoli finally tumekubaliana na kuanzia miezi miwili iliyopita sasa kila mfanyikazi analipa 6% na kila employer analipa 6%. Na unajua the beneficiary here good people the beneficiary is the worker. Sasa wewe mkulima wewe mfanyikazi umetoa 200. Sasa yule employer wako atatoa tu 200. Lakini ukitoa elfu moja, he will be forced kutoa nini? Elfu moja. Mwenye amefaulu ni nani? Si mfanyikazi. Kwa sababu ile pesa yake ya retirement imeongezeka. That is the logic my friends. In the last two months, let me give you the statistics. In the last two months, baada ya sisi ku implement 6%, pesa ya retirement ya wafanyikazi imeongezeka kutoka 1.2 billion every month in the month of february ilikuwa 2.5 billion in the month of march ilikuwa 3.5 billion i promise you in the next 3 4 months it is going to be the maximum which is going to be 6.5 billion shillings every month money that will be available to the kenyan workers in retirement Nyinyi mnanielewa jameni? That is the thinking. That is the transformation that is going to change Kenya. Hatuwezi kubadilisha Kenya kwa kufanya mambo ya jana na juzi. We have to learn from best practice. Mimi nataka niwahakikishie kama mimi pia nikiwa ni mfanyikazi nimeajiriwa kama vile nyinyi na wananchi wa taifa letu la Kenya. Ya kwamba hiyo eh, 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 statistics ambayo nimepatiwa kutoka wizara ya leba ni kwamba we are only at around eh, 60% wale watu ambao wame wame wame, wame ratify na tayari sasa wana contribute from the eh, 3.6 million workers we have on payroll already 2.5 million wameanza kulipa 6% imebaki only 1 million 
and I am confident that progressively we will get to the numbers and we will begin the journey. Kwa sababu, nataka niwaeleze, and I have to tell you this because by God's grace I am the leader today in Kenya. Ya kwamba, Kenya, the culture of saving, we are only at 8% of GDP. Inchi zingine ziko all the way to 55% of GDP. Ndiyo munaona tunayenda kukopa pesa kutoka China. Kwa sababu in China, their saving culture is at 55% of GDP. Hatutaki kuenda kukopa pesa China tena. Tunataka hii pesa yetu ambayo tunia wafanyikazi wa Kenya ndio watatusaidia kujenga nazo barabara, kujenga nazo dunia hii na tuwalipe ile interest tunalipa wale Chinese na tunalipa wale watu wengine hawa wafanyikazi wa Kenya wafaidike na interest ya serikali. That is all we are asking good people. Hiyo ni agenda yetu ya kwanza kutetea hawa wakulima, hawa, hawa wafanyikazi. These workers they should retire in dignity because they have saved enough money to take care of their retirement. Jambo la pili ili tuweze ku protect these Kenyan workers. Jambo la pili ni mambo ya matibabu. NHIF na matibabu in general. Niliwaahidi wa Kenya ya kwamba tutachenguza upya maneno ya afya wa Kenya wengi karibu wa Kenya milioni moja statistics show that up to 1 million Kenyans sink into poverty because of medical bills meaning that many families end up in poverty because a loved one got sick they sell everything they sell their produce they sell their wares they sell their property and end up in poverty. And we must address ourselves to the issue of health in Kenya. Niliwaahidi ya kwamba hii mambo ya health tutaichunguza. Mimi nataka niwatangazie hivi. Nimeketi chini na wizara yetu ya afya tumepanga ile mpango tulikuwa nayo. Niliwaahidi ya kwamba tutaanza mambo ya health upia we are going to have a paradigm shift in the delivery of our health um, products in Kenya we are not going to go the route that we have always invested in curative health we are going to go the opposite direction in promotive and preventive health interventions hatua ya kwanza ni ile sakaja amesema hapa Tumekubaliana na county governments ya kwamba mambo ya health asante governor mambo ya health tunaanza pale chini kwa community health promoters na tumekubaliana ya kwamba we are going to recruit 100,000 community health promoters in Kenya kila familia kumi eh, bi, sorry Kila familia miyamoja Munisikize vizuri Kila familia miyamoja Tutakuwa na community health promoter moja Ambaye kila mwezi atatembelea kila familia Na tumempatia equipment ya kupima pressure Kupima nini, kupima nini Ili ugonjwa yako tuanze kumbambana nae mapema Kapila hujaenda hospitalini Tayari, almost all the counties already have community health promoters. What we are going to do as national government is to agree with them on how we are going to remunerate these community health promoters. And we are going to share 50-50. Every county that contributes whatever money, we are going to match the money you are contributing in making sure that we have community health promoters that are going to help us to prevent diseases, to promote health among its citizens in a manner that ensures that we begin from the bottom going up.
yenye mnanielewa jambo la pili niliwaambia haiwezekani kwamba mimi rais nalipa shilingi elfu moja na mia saba kila mwezi na mama mboga na muti ya boda boda analipa shilingi mia tano ili akuwe na kadi ya NHIF mimi mshahara yangu ni milioni moja yule boda boda eh, mapato yake ni 5000 kuna ungwana pale kweli so nimesema tumebadilisha the contribution mechanism and the contribution formula sasa yule mfanyi eh, yule ambaye mlikuwa muna, muna lipa kwa NHIF shilingi 500 sasa tutateremusha chini ikuje shilingi 300 kwa wale mmekuwa mkilipa shilingi 500 kuanzia mwezi wa saba tukikamilisha budget <coughs> na mimi ambaye ni rais ambaye nimekuwa nishikilipa shilingi 1000 sasa mimi nitalipa shilingi 1027 na, na 500 na hao wengine katikati hapo watalipa lipa hapo kidogo kidogo namna hiyo so that we have an equitable contribution mechanism every one of us is going to contribute 2.7% of their earning to NHIF so that we can carry this load of health equally na vile vile tumeweka mpango mzuri ili kila mwananchi apate nafasi ya kuweza kupeleka watu wao wakiwa wagonjwa kwanza tuna, tuna ile ambayo tunaweza kumalizana nayo kule mashinani tumalizana nayo hakuna haja ya mtu mwenye ako na homa anaenda Kenyatta National Hospital homa tunaweza kumalizana naye huko kwa kijiji ni kweli ama si kweli iko haja ya mtu ya homa aende Kenyatta National Hospital kuleta congestion si tunamalizana naye mashambani huko nyumbani community health promoter health center dispensary hapo tunamalizana na hiyo hapo tumekubaliana jameni so we have a deliberate plan on how we are going to change how we deliver health in the Republic of Kenya because that is the timely intervention that is necessary for our republic at this point in time nasema hivyo kwa sababu we want to serve the Kenyan worker and protect the Kenyan worker so that they can work optimally for us and work for their country and work for our nation. Jambo la tatu ambayo lazima tufanye ili kuwasaidia wafanyikazi wetu. Nimesema lazima to protect their whole age, lazima to protect their health na vile vile sera mpya we are going to have a new wages and remuneration policy tunatengeneza sera mpya ambayo itashughulikia ni nani analipwa pesa ngapi tuondoe tofauti ambayo iko kati ya wafanyikazi wa umma wafanyikazi wa private sector we must harmonize how we treat all our workers so that all workers work for equal pay that is fair and that ensures hata tukisema minimal wage lazima tukubaliane how do we arrive at minimal wage how do we arrive at a decent livable wage hiyo sera tayari iko katika baraza letu la mawaziri bwana chairman wa labor hapo bunge eh, bwana karemba yuko hapa anaitwa bwana mushangi tutaleta hiyo sera bunge alafu nyinyi kama bunge mtatembelea hawa wafanyikazi wa Kenya wote walete mchango wao vile wangependa hiyo sera itekelezwe kwa manufaa ya wafanyikazi wote wa taifa letu la Kenya <coughs> jambo la ine ambayo tunataka kufanya kushughulikia hawa wafanyikazi wetu ni mambo ya injury in the place of work kuna wana, eh, wafanyikazi wengi wanaumia pale kazini na inakuwa ni changamoto kubwa kupata compensation wengi wanakuja pale katika wizara ya leba wanaangaika ofisi hii wanaangaika ofisi hile kwa sababu tumesema ile mpango iko sasa for compensation around injuries 
at the place of work ni kwamba it is the employer who bears liability we want to change the structure because some employers run away from that responsibility when it happens we are going to change that whole framework so that it becomes a social insurance scheme called the workers compensation fund so that it is predictable so that every worker has access na pia itakuwa rahisi kwa employers so that employers don't carry too much uh, burden when their employees are injured they only contribute an insurance premium that will ensure that if workers are injured there is a fund that will make sure they are paid some of the workers lose their limbs they lose their hands and that is what makes them unpaid we must be able to compensate workers in that manner vile vile mimi nataka niseme ya kwamba wakati nimekuwa hapa nimeona vibango ambazo zimepita hapa Waki, wafanyikazi wakisema wanataka eh, ile section ile ILO convention 189 on decent work for eh, for domestic workers mimi nataka niwaambie nimeshaongea na waziri wetu anapanga we are going to discuss in the next cabinet my deputy here is going to lead that charge so that we can conclude and we can ratify the convention on decent work for domestic workers ILO convention number 189 nataka vile vile ni wahakikishie ya kwamba ILO convention number 190 ambayo pia inashughulika na maneno ya um, elimination of violence and harassment in places of work ILO convention number 190 together with ILO convention number 189 to ensure that workers can go to work there is no harassment there is no intimidation and there is no violence at the place of work the kenya government we are working on it in the next three months we will have concluded the ratification of those two conventions so that we can protect the kenyan worker as they serve our country and as they work hard for our nation nilisema ya kwamba tunaongeza wale wanafanya kazi but we must also protect them we must make sure that they uh, end up in decent retirement they must also live in an environment that health is provided and finally let me say that as the government of kenya um, we must continuously work on reducing the cost of living sisi tunataka kuhakikisha kwamba kila mwananchi anaweza kulisha familia yake tunaelewana jameni tumeongea mambo ya unga left right and center mimi mwenyewe niliwaahidi ya kwamba tutakuwa na mpango ambayo itateremusha gharama ya maisha na hiyo mpango watu wengine hawaelewi unga sio ya kwamba inapunguzwa bei ati kwa shelf unga inaanza kupunguzwa bei kwa kumsaidia mkulima shambani azalishe chakula ya kutosha ndio chakula ikue kingi ikifika pale e, sokoni iwe bei yake imepungua tunaelewana hata ubebe sufuria kwa kichwa siku ngapi bei ya unga itapungua kwa kupeka sufuria kwa kichwa hata kama ni kwa uganga hata ikiwa ni kwa madawa so mimi nataka tuelewane na unajua hii bei ya unga ilifika 2.30 kwa sababu mawazo ya hawa jamaa wanafikiria kwamba ukiweka sufuria kwa kichwa ndio bei itapungua if you do not have a plan on how to grow more food 
so that you increase supply, how are you going to reduce the prices of food commodities? And that is why mimi na washukuru wakulima wetu tumepatia niliwaeleza ya kwamba tutapunguza gharama ya mbolea tumepunguza kutoka shilingi elfu saba mpaka shilingi elfu tatu na mia tano na mwaka ujao tutapunguza zaidi so that in due time we will make sure that we manage the cost of living we manage the cost of food so that every citizen of the republic of kenya anaweza kulisha familia yake na chakula ipatikane kwa bei nafuu na kila mkenya aweze kujisimamia that is the direction we are going mimi nimesikia mumesema bado bado mimi nataka niwaambie hivi hii bei ilikuwa 230 si ni kweli saa hizi ukienda kwa shelf na mimi nataka niwaambie endeni hapa quick mart ama uende naivash utakuta iko shilingi iko ya shilingi mbili iko ya shilingi 180 iko ya shilingi 170 iko ya shilingi 158 wewe ndio utaamua utanunua gani kama unataka kununua ya 200 ununue ya 200 kama unataka kununua ya 158 nunua ya 158 hiyo ni uamuzi yako tunaelewana si dunia hii ni demokrasia si unafanya ile unajua unataka kufanya na mimi nitaendelea kukaza kamba bado kuna millers wanatufanyia ukora lakini mimi nitapambana na wao mpaka tuhakikishe ya kwamba every citizen has a right to access food that is quality that is enough for their families na hiyo kazi mimi nitafanya na bidii unajua hawa jamaa hiyo safari ya kufikisha unga 230 ilikuwa ni safari ya miaka ine. Sasa mimi nataka niwaulize safari ya miaka ine unaweza kukamilisha kwa wiki mbili? Hata kama wewe ni malaika? So watulize boli. Maneno mimi napanga. Ama niaje? Sijui kama tunaelewana. Kama hawa jamaa niliwapanga wakiwa na deep state na system na nini? Anyway, wacha nisilete siasa ingine ambayo wajana na wacha ni wajana na hiyo story. Sijui kama tumekubaliana wangwana wa Nairobi na wafanyikazi wenzangu mimi nataka niwahakikishie hivi sawa mimi nataka niwahakikishie ya kwamba kama taifa la Kenya sisi tunaheshimu haki ya kila mtu tunaheshimu ndugu zetu wa upinzani kwa sababu wako na jukumu ya kikatiba ya kutekeleza katika upinzani but we also know what democracy looks like we also know what human rights are it is nothing to do with violence it is nothing to do with anarchy it is nothing to do with destruction of property and destruction of livelihoods and destruction of people's businesses that is not democracy that is not human rights so we must keep to the straight and narrow all of us mimi nataka niwahakikishie here today ya kwamba haiwezekani sitaruhusu mali ya mwananchi kuharibiwa biashara ya mwananchi kuharibika kazi ya mwananchi kuharibika watoto wetu ati wasiende shule ati kwa sababu kuna watu wanataka kutulazimisha ati tugawane serikali that one will not happen good people tuelewane tu mapema kwa sababu that is the Kenya we live in we are a democratic country and we want the best for everybody respectfully i want to ask my friends tumekubaliana badala ya kuharibu mali ya wananchi badala ya kuharibu biashara ya wananchi badala ya fujo na vita tuongee bunge wabunge waongee watafute masava watafute hiyo ingine watafute nini kule bungeni lakini kwenda kuharibu biashara ya mwananchi ati walienda kawangware wakaharibu biashara ya wananchi mwananchi amengangana ako na biashara yake hapo ameweka elfu tano. wewe unakuja na guns na wahuni elfu moja, elfu mbili. wanakuja wanasambaratisha ile biashara ya ule mungwana wanakuja wanaharibu kioski ya watu wananyanganya watu mali hiyo will not happen in Kenya good people please tuelewana mapema so mimi nataka niwahakikishie wa Kenya 
serikali ya Kenya itasimamia haki ya kila mkenya kuendesha biashara yake, kuendesha kazi yake, kusomesha watoto wake na kuendelea na kazi yake kwa njia ya utulifu na amani. That is why we have a country, that is why we have a government and that is why our security agencies are paid to protect the lives, the property, the businesses of every citizen of the Republic of Kenya. And that is the job that I was hired for by the people of Kenya. And I will do it diligently. Bila ya kusita. Siju kama tumelewana? Wafanyikazi hoye? Siniluambia mapema ndiyo best? So, mimi nataka niulize awa viongozi wenzangu. Tafadhali, naomba kwa unyanyekevu my good friends. Tushirikiane, tufanye kazi pamoja, tuwatumikie wananchi wa taifa letu la Kenya, we will all reap a reward. Kama siyo hapa duniani, tutapata mshahara kule mbinguni. Asante ni sana, mungu wa bariki kila siku. Thank you very much. Tumpigie Rais Makofi kwa hiyo hotuba yake. Na sasa tutamalizia kwa wimbo wa taifa. Kwa hivyo naomba sote mahali tulipo, tuweze kusmama ili tumalize kwa ombi ambalo ni wimbo wa taifa wote ambao tayari tumeketi tafadhali naomba tusimame mahali tulipo ili tuweze kumalizia kwa wimbo wa taifa basi naomba tuweze kumruhusu rais aweze kuondoka Asante sana mheshimiwa rais tumefika kilele na mwisho wa sherehe yetu We've come to the end of this particular ceremony thank you your excellency Have a wonderful Labor Day